First, let me thank each of you for your service and what you're doing here for our country and for the people of Afghanistan. Uh, it um, is, uh, as you know, an immense responsibility uh, for each of you to be part of something so important at an important time in the world, certainly an important time for this country, uh, for the United States of America. And to each of you and your families, thank you for your sacrifices uh, and your service. Uh, it is true I uh, was in the United States Army in 1968 in Vietnam. I was with the 9th Infantry Division. Uh, I wasn't smart enough to be in the 101st uh, but uh, worked with the 101st uh, on two different occasions and have many friends who served with the Screaming Eagles for many years. Uh, some even uh, led this uh, much decorated and distinguished division. And I uh, always have appreciated this service that this division has given to uh, our country. I'm going to ask for each of you uh, if you've got any questions or, more importantly, advice for me here in a minute. But let me uh, make a couple of comments. Uh, first, uh, I am uh, much honored to serve as Secretary of Defense. Uh, it, uh, of course, is a personal privilege. But more than that, it is a opportunity to serve with America's finest men and women who render as selfless a service as I know. And to be part of your team is indeed a great privilege. And I want you to know how proud I am to be part of your team in working with you. And I want you to also know that I will uh, always do my best for you, uh, for your families, our country. Uh, I will uh, always uh, put uh, our men and women in uniform first uh, and do everything I can to ensure your safety, your success, uh, and everything that uh, you're ent entitled to. Uh, these are not easy times for our country for the world, and uh, certainly um, these are not easy times to be part of our armed forces. Uh, but they are times that give us each uh, a rare opportunity to participate in something that uh, doesn't come along every day. Uh, we uh, are seeing a world in uh, great transition, uh, just like the transition uh, underway here in Afghanistan. Uh, that uh, presents uh, great possibilities for all of us. Uh, yes, dangers. Yes, uncertainty. Yes, complicated challenges. Uh, but I think the way we always look at challenges is that uh, we see through those challenges to find the opportunity to help make a better world. And if there is one thing that defines your service, your sacrifices, uh, it is uh, to help make a better world. I thank you for that, and I remind you of that opportunities that we all have uh, working together uh, to accomplish something that not all generations have an opportunity to accomplish. So thank you. Again, I'm uh, very proud to be part of your team, and I look forward to working with you as uh, we go forward on all the big issues that face uh, all of us. Now, what do you want to talk about? What advice do you have? Who wants to start? Yes. Mr. Secretary, 
Uh, with the high unemployment rate facing uh, veterans of our Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, uh, what, is you, what are we doing to uh, help this veterans as they transition out of the military and back into the civilian sector to be successful? Well, uh, uh, I appreciate Specialist Lyons, your question. Uh, it is a fundamental question uh, for each of you and your families. There is no higher priority uh, that I have than to uh, assist our, our men and women as they transition out uh, into uh, a different life whenever that transition comes. Uh, and that includes employment opportunities, that includes benefits, uh, that includes uh, uh, all of the commitments that our nation makes to each of you when you agree to make a commitment to our country. Uh, we have, a, a, as you know, many ongoing programs in place. Uh, we need to implement new programs. Uh, we will. Uh, I will do everything uh, I possibly can to assure those commitments uh, are fulfilled uh, at every level in every uh, program. In fact, uh, when I get back next week, I'm uh, going to be meeting with Secretary of Veterans Affairs General Eric Shinseki to uh, reconnect with General Shinseki, who I've known for many years uh, as committed and dedicated American as I know of, you know of his uh, distinguished military career. And uh, that's one area of cooperation, of working closer uh, with the VA in uh, assuring that some of those programs are carried uh, forward. We have other programs specifically focused on employment, uh, a new GI Bill, which uh, I hope uh, many of you and your families are either taking advantage of some at some point or will. Um, I. Uh, uh, was a leading co-sponsor of that legislation uh, back in 2008, which I'm very proud of. Uh, that, uh, I think, gives uh, our military men and women and their families, for the first time ever, uh, more options uh, and more benefits uh, uh, than ever. So uh, many of the programs that we need to continue to work on, work through, the funding for those is critically important, and I will do uh, everything within my power to assure that uh, the funding is there and the commitments that we've made to you uh, are fulfilled. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Secretary, how will sequestration affect military PCS movements? The. Uh, question is on sequestration and PCS movements, but larger questions abound on sequestration, as uh, you know. Um, I think you all are aware of uh, what's going on in Washington uh, with sequestration, and essentially what that means is uh, what is happening uh, to the Department of Defense as one of the federal agencies uh, in Washington. Uh, we are uh, required to take a cut in our budget. We are managing that. We are dealing with it. We will continue to manage uh, with those realities. Further complicating that is a, a continuing resolution that is funding our departments, funding the government. That continuing resolution uh, comes due March 27th, so the, the Congress uh, is going to have to make a decision uh, as to um, uh, what happens after the 27th. Uh, many of you have been following this. The House of Representatives uh, passed legislation here this week. But uh, that being the landscape, which most of you know, uh, yes, it affects everything. It, uh, it affects uh, all of our programs. But uh, what uh, I'm committed to do and our leaders uh, are committed to do, I've met uh, with the chiefs of each service and the secretaries of each service a number of times, uh, met with them two days ago before I left Washington, uh, is to assure uh, that our men and women uh, in uniform 
uh, are not affected on um, any of uh, the pay benefits. Our uh, readiness continues uh, to um, stay uh, as um, active and alert and uh, essential uh, as uh, any, at any time. And so we are adjusting in uh, training, steaming time, flight time, uh, areas that don't affect directly uh, uh, our men and women in uniform and, and our readiness. But it, it's a problem. It's serious. Uh, it, if it continues, it, uh, uh, it will make uh, our jobs more difficult. Uh, our jobs are more difficult now. But uh, if it continues, it'll, it'll be uh, more and more difficult uh, for uh, us to do what uh, we are required to do, and that is to assure the security of America uh, around the world. Uh, we will manage it. We will work through it. And uh, we'll continue to work with the Congress uh, on um, ways to uh, make sure that that certainty of security is, uh, is there and will continue to be there. Thank you. So some of the benefits for same-sex partners are already in the works. Do you plan on uh, pushing so that the same-sex partners get all the benefits as other spouses? Well, the, the quick answer to the question is yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I made that commitment to um, the Congress. I made that commitment to the President. It's the right thing to do. Uh, uh, every member uh, who serves their country uh, deserves the same benefits. Uh, that's right. It's, it's the right thing to do. Uh, as many of you know, before Secretary Panetta left office, uh, he issued a statement which uh, uh, addresses even more of, of those uh, issues. We still have more to address. We will. But uh, I'm absolutely committed to fulfill the commitments uh, that uh, were made by the President, same commitments that uh, I made to the Congress and the men and women and their families of the Armed Forces. Yes. Mr. Secretary, with the um, budget cuts and the downsizing of the military, how will that change what our main focus as soldiers and the military will be when we get back to stateside, Mr. Secretary? Well, a, a general uh, question about with the sequestration and the budget limitations, uh, uh, how it uh, would affect uh, our focus uh, on our military men and women as they transition back to the United States. As I said earlier, um, if the sequestration continues, and we see this for a long period of time, uh, it is going to affect um, our ability uh, to have flexibility and certainty uh, in uh, assignments and uh, other areas that uh, will affect some of our people. So uh, I think uh, in the meantime, we uh, uh, must continue to work with the Congress and work with our people and, and manage the realities that we have in front of us uh, to assure the readiness and the capabilities of our, of our forces. Take one more. Yeah. Mr. Sec Mr. Secretary, I just had one question. Um, how is this about, how is this, everything going on in Congress right now going to affect the, us that are about to retire? Well, I think the retirement benefits and uh, all the commitments that have been made to all of you uh, will uh, continue to uh, be assured, and uh, w we will protect those uh, th those benefits. And uh, I uh, have every confidence that the Congress uh, has every intention uh, in continuing to work with us on assuring that uh, uh, all of our uh, retirement benefits and other benefits uh, continue to be uh, funded and the commitments fulfilled. Okay. 
Again, thank you very, very much for your service to our country. Uh, give my regards to your families. Uh, I uh, have some appreciation for what your families uh, go through. I think the families are always uh, in a position where it's, in almost every case, most difficult for them. Uh, not that it's easy for you, but uh, the families have to uh, always kind of be behind and worry and deal with the day-to-day -day rigors of, of um, in many cases, uh, one-parent families and other responsibilities while you're doing your job for our country. And I uh, want you to know, as Secretary of Defense, I uh, have some appreciation of that. I recognize that, and uh, we very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.